Today we'll be covering the opening of the Kumon Learning Center, taking a look at the STEAM Children's Program, covering a recap of the MassCom Media Bowl, and meeting a potential match from last week's speed dating event. So if you can't find your remote, that's okay, because NAC Edition starts now. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Alex Davis. And I'm Cheyenne Gibbs. And you are tuning in in today's episode of NAC Edition. Nacogdoches is the town for handmade art after the Artisan Market event. Bridget Taylor has more on the story. The Handmade Artisan Market event held at the Nacogdoches County Exposition and Civic Center on February 18th displayed handmade artwork for customers to come look and shop. The artwork displayed ranged anywhere from paintings and pottery to knives and even jelly. Even though this is the first year for this event to be put on, there's already 40 different companies displaying their handmade artwork. One husband and wife duo found a passion after retirement for handmade craftsmanship. My wife makes everything. We only sell at shows. We don't have a shop as such. But uh, she makes uh, necklaces and Christmas spiders and various other things. And their most popular item? Spiders. The spiders have a Christmas story about a woman who had no decorations for her tree. When she woke up, a spider had woven a web of silver. It's an old German folk tale about where tinsel came from. And so we have the spiders, and we also have a children's book that's a more elaborate version of the story. And they make a really nice gift, and they don't have to go in a Christmas tree. People use them all different kinds of ways. Along with spiders, his wife enjoys handcrafting necklaces and earrings with over 16 years of practice. While some use handmade craftsmanship as a hobby and post-retirement activity, others have found a full-time job and career with their talents. Basically, I don't have a day off. Uh, usually, my shows are Saturdays and Sundays, and when I get home Sunday night, I'm placing orders with my suppliers for the different things I might need to, make, to start making uh, replenishment for what I sold over the weekend. I then am in the shop pretty much Monday through Friday working on uh, pens or other items, whatever I'm making that week, whatever I need to make. Uh, then usually leave Friday, either Friday afternoon to head to a show or early Saturday morning I head out to the next show. And his most popular item? His bolt action bullet pin. A name coined for its unique way of clicking a pin open. With door prizes and even a photo booth, the first ever Nacogdoches Handmade Artisan Market showed off the artistic talents of people across the U.S. With NAC Edition, this is Bridget Taylor. <clears throat> the Judy B. McDonald Public Library, located in Nacogdoches, is providing an educational after-school program called STEAM for Kids. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math, whose core concept is to enrich children's knowledge in the subjects they learn in school. The program surfaced after research showed that children learn better when they are in control of their own environment and their own pace of learning. The program provides an engaging atmosphere where children can socialize and participate in fun activities that prove a curriculum's purpose. The program is designed to help students obtain future jobs within these fields. The program is limited in its resources and availability, so make sure you register ahead of time before the program's events take place. There is a waiting area for parents to watch the activities their ch children will be doing during the lesson. You can call the Nacogdoches Public Library at 936-559-2970 to register your child for the STEAM activities, which are found on the Spring Activity Guide 2018 on the Nacogdoches Public Library's website. The Kumon Tutoring franchise in Nacogdoches has finally opened its doors to the community after celebrating its ribbon-cutting ceremony. Keisha Wines has more on the story. The Nacogdoches community welcomes all to the new Kumon Math and Reading Center. The Kumon method focuses on individualized instruction and self-learning. 
and hopes to reach new heights for the Nacogdoches education system, owner and instructor Amin Rajini has set many goals that are driven towards expanding the futures of his students. Here's Rajini. Well, and other goals that's uh, more concise to the student is uh, working toward maximizing their potential and getting them where they're supposed to be and uh, making them best in school and outside the school. Kumon works to help children of all ages and learning abilities. The center gives parents the tools to monitor their child's progress, help their child build a solid grasp of math and reading, and grow more confident while mastering each lesson. There are nearly 1,500 Kumon Learning Centers in the U.S., all of which are franchises. We applied for the franchise and uh, we got approved in um, one month and uh, from there we, I, I started training on it and we ha have to go through the intense training uh, to New York, Dallas and other places. The ribbon cutting was hosted by the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce. After the ceremony took place, students and parents were able to enjoy refreshments and kid-friendly activities such as face painting and balloon twisting. I think we had four or five, five families that decided to enroll their child in there. Uh, some of them were homeschooling ones. Uh, some of them were their students were dyslexic or uh, those kind of students. They wanted uh, to hear about come on like what we can do and we explained them and they decided uh, they might uh, come in and start this program. Parents who are interested in enrolling their children at the Kumon Center should either go online to www.kumon.com slash Nacogdoches, visit during their office hours, or call at 936-622-2221. For Nacogdoches, I'm Keisha Wines. Earlier this month, the Mass Communication Department here at SFA hosted its annual Media Day Bowl. Uh, specialists and experienced experts from fields of journalism, radio, TV, public relations, and advertising from around Texas and Louisiana all came to Nacogdoches for one day only to share their knowledge and wisdom to all the budding undergraduates of the Mass Media majors. Students were able to pick which lectures they wanted to attend depending on their major and minors. It is a day of high importance for Lumberjacks as it provides them with a wonderful opportunity to make contacts, gain useful information, and receive valuable feedback for the um, life after college. When we come back, we will be talking with two participants from the speed dating event hosted by the Fashion and Motion organization that happened on SFA's campus last week. We will discuss just what it was like being a part of a real speed dating activity. Stay tuned. We have two participants with us today, JC and Anthony, from a speed dating event hosted by the Fashion and Motion Organization on SFA's campus. Let's take a quick look at just what that event looked like. Last week in the Baker Patillo Student Center, the Stephen F. Austin community came together the night before Valentine's Day in hopes to meet a match with F&M speed dating. Though it may seem that the matchmaking process has been integrated in American culture for years, Speed dating has only been around since the late 90s. With the tradition making its 30-year mark, it was time for someone to aspire a new direction. This refreshing twist to the age-old custom was developed and orchestrated by FNM president Couture Burnett. Well, FNM stands for Fashion Motion, and it is um, an organization that was founded in 2007 here at SFA. Tonight was speed dating, but the title of it was Last Minute Pickup because today is February 13th, and this will be your last opportunity to find someone to spend Valentine's Day with. Unlike your ordinary speed dating, where participants are separated by tables and labeled with a name tag, F&M encourages people to get out of their chairs and thoroughly engage with one another through various activities. 
Well, lately, for the last two semesters, they haven't been traditional speed dating where, you know, you sit down, you ask questions, then you move around when the time is up. Um, ours is more so based off of, like, the atmosphere. So we play music to get everyone involved, get the conversation going, and then we move into games. So tonight we played, um, you know, finish the lyrics. She stand about We did teams, then we did city versus city, then we did throwbacks, so those were pretty fun. The new dynamic of being able to engage with each other and dive into developing interpersonal relationships was uplifting. Even forming new friendships or companionships was invited. I really like the interaction between people that I've never like, you know, interacted before. Um, that's my main goal of throwing speed dating um, each semester. It's not so much to find someone that you could possibly have a relationship with, but more so build a friendship with. Whether it was developed through friendly competition, sing-alongs with friends, or just getting out of your comfort zone in front of others, the Speed Dating event definitely left an impression on the SFA community. For more information about the organization, follow at FNM underscore SFA. For NAC Edition, I'm Javante Henry. Thank you for jo joining us this evening. I have JC and Anthony with me that attended the speed dating event. Um, can you all tell us how you all heard out or found out about the event? <laughs> well, we're actually in the organization. So, of course, supporting our organization and then just having fun going to the event. Yeah, same. Uh, I've been at FNM since last year, my first semester of freshman year. That was the first uh, organization that I joined, actually. Ever since then, every semester I do it. So, it was really just. One of those things I had to support. It, it would seem like to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So even though you had to like support the organization because y'all sponsored the event, did y'all kind of feel uncomfortable being a part of it? No, because really most of the people that I knew were going. So I was just surrounded by mostly my friends and, st and my everyday people that I go to class with or hang out with. So it was really just another hangout place to go to. Okay. okay, what was the most fun part of it? Musical chairs. Musical chairs. That was probably the most intense and roughest game of musical chairs I've ever experienced. In my life. Like, like I've never seen a man flip over a chair while, while somebody's in yeah, it. While like. I was sitting in the chair, they flipped them over just to get a seat, and it was just so much fun. Wow, did anyone get hurt? No, no, no. That's the funny thing about it. No one got hurt, and they continued playing the game. So it was just so much fun. So did people actually come to, like, find a date, or was it just kind of a come out and, like, support you know, the Fashion Motion organization? I mean, people did meet new people because I did also met new people that I, I continually keep in contact with after uh, the speed dating. But actually a relationship type, probably not. Probably not, yeah. Yeah. Did anybody have or get into a relationship kind of thing or most people just came to like bond? Um, I think actually a few people I mm -hmm. know actually got into like a little situation, <laughs> but. <laughs> Do you have any updates on them? No, I need to get those, and I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what aspects of it were, like, got people to talk the most or be the closest? Probably was just learning about each other's lives. Because, like, everybody's different, and you don't know what people are doing in their lives, and it's just interesting hearing other people's stories. Because everybody comes from different walks of life. So just to hear, let's just when I first met JC, I learned a lot of stuff about her, and we became close friends, and same uh, with Javante, just, diff just different people. Very cool. And um, y'all played Never Have I Ever. Can y'all tell us a little <laughs> bit about that? Oh, uh, you got it. You good? Ooh. So, the group I was in, I don't know why, but I was, I decided to be in a whole group full of girls mm -hmm. in my game, so really I felt attacked. <laughs> the questions that was being asked, but I mean, I'm not gonna really go into detail about it. Yeah. It's, it's very private, but I mean, I learned some things. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So did you come out with um like people to contact just as friends, like friends you've made? Um, and I know they all do it a couple, or y'all do it every Valentine's Day mm -hmm. as part of organization. But can you kind of tell us what Fashion in Motion is exactly? Well, Fashion in Motion is a fashion show that we put on every semester. Um, it's something big that's kind of taken over. One of the things that kind of taken over SFA, 
Yeah. I've been doing, like I said, I've been doing it. That was the first organization that I joined, and I loved it ever since. Plus, I love kind of like being a model. I've always wanted to be a model type, so I feel like this is my way to kind of show off and kind of do my own thing. Plus, it's just a great way to just meet new people and right. just with the stylists. I mean, just their creativity. And the things that they come in with with their clothes is just amazing. Right. So the speed dating event, which is something that y'all have always done traditionally, like every year. Right. 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 Did, y'all, did y'all get a good turnout at the we event? We had a great turnout. It was a, like every chair was full. Okay. That cool. There were people standing in the back and everything. So yeah. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it looked like there was a lot of like music and dancing. And a lot yeah. of music, yeah. a lot of dancing. You talked about how Fashion Emotion puts on a fashion show every year. Is that what y'all focus on for most of the year, or what are y'all doing when you're not working on the fashion well, show? Well, one thing that we do, and actually we have to do it Thursday, is the thing we do called Trash for Change, and that's where we go around and we just take out people's trash and just ask for donations because we donate the money and we just kind of just help our community to make it a better place to live in. So if someone's interested in joining Fashion Emotion, who can they contact? They can really get on our Twitter page. It's at uh, FNM underscore SFA and that's where they can find all the information our her president who is Katura she has the whole thing organized perfectly and great she's doing a great job by the way and if they want to know any information they can find it that way okay and what um, event do y'all have coming up soon we actually have the fashion show which is in April okay. and it's the different elements of like wind earth fire and it's just amazing how we have it all set up okay, very cool um, thank you again, JC and Anthony, for um, talking with us today um, about the event. When we return, we will take a quick look at the news happening in sports, so stay tuned. The track and field teams had a great regular season. Now they are off to the conferences. Today was the kickoff of the Southland Conference Indoor Meet hosted in Alabama. The conference will last for two days and the athletes will compete all day. Let's take a look. action of the season, posted a fourth place finish in the 60 meter dash as well as a ninth place spot in the 200 meter dash. Amani Naive ran alongside Bell in the 60 meters, placing six in the semifinals with a time of 7.71. For the women's relay, the SFA relay team of Williams, Ford, Davis, and Sanders captured first with a time of 3.57, while SFA's B team of Messer, Allison Compass, Madison Compass, and Singleton placed third with a time of 4.08. The men and women's team will compete again in College Station at the NCAA Indoor Championship March 9th and 10th. Moving on to basketball. The men's basketball team will try to hold on to their 22-5 overall record as they play the University of Central Arkansas Bears at home this evening, hoping to improve to a 12-3 record in their conference. This Saturday, they will go up against the Cardinals at 7 p.m. Our Lady Jacks are dominating on the court as well. The following second in their conference right behind Lamar. Lady Jacks face Central Arkansas this evening in Conwin, Arkansas. Let's go Jacks! Now for athletes that might want to get a little more physical, SFA Sports Club organization offers one of the toughest sports around. Originating from England, yes, it's rugby. The SFA rugby team went up against Perry View A&M University this past Saturday and came out with the win, scoring 24-7. It was a tough fight between the two teams early on, leading the way being sent off. Two players from Perry View received red cards, as well as a rookie from SFA, all for illegal high tackles around the body. Here's a closer look at the game on Saturday. 39 by a Cambridge student before making its way onto U.S. Fields in 1874 is offered here at SFA. This game is not for the timid because no padding or head protection is worn in rugby. You can run with the ball, kick it, and pass it. But passing forwards is not allowed. You can tackle an opponent to get the ball as long as you stay within the rules. There is a referee aided by two touch judges, one on each side of the pitch. To decide how the rules should be applied during a game, there are three ways to score the points. A try, which is five points, are rewarded for touching the ball down in your opponent's goal area. A conversion, two points are added for successful kick through the goal post after a try. 
and a goal kick or three points are awarded for a penalty kick or drop goal through the post. If both teams score the same amount of points or no points are scored, then the match is a draw. In some cases, extra time is played to decide who wins. This past Saturday, SFA played Perry View A&M University and took home the win with a score of 24 to 7. Here at SFA, fans and students don't mind sitting in the frigid cold weather to watch their Jacks play this diverse and exciting contact sport we call rugby. Batter up SFA because the men's basketball 2018 schedule has been released. The Lumberjack roster consists of a talented group of 22 newcomers that have been at hard work alongside the Jacks, 14 returners. The players are ready to throw out strikes at SFA's own JC's field. They're off to a great start. They will go up against Bradley University here in Nacogdoches on February 24th. In the game of SFA versus UTRGV, senior first baseman Josh Evans scored two home runs at the top of the fifth to cut UTRGV's lead to three. The Vecro scored six of the next seven runs to break the game open as the F SFA baseball team closed out its four-game slate at the El Ogrichi Classic following 11-5 to host UTRGV Sunday. We're going to switch gears to the professional side of basketball. This past weekend was the All-Star Game. All-Star Weekend is like the Super Bowl for the NBA. The weekend gives players for every team of the NBA to show off their skills in a slam dunk contest, three-point shootout, and even East versus West rival game. The best two players in the NBA represented the East and West areas. LeBron James guided the East to a 148-145 victory past Stephen Curry's West team. Some highlights of the weekend included Donovan Mitchell's slam dunk contest. After his creative dunk, he received a perfect score of 50 from the judges taking home the trophy. Devin Booker from the Phoenix Suns was the three-point shooter winner. Finally, women's soccer just welcomed six new signees and has released their 2018 schedule. Seeing how successful the Lady Jacks have been, these ladies have big shoes to fill. Head coach Wally Crittenton is sure these six girls, along with the other veterans, will continue to set the bar high. The new signees included Matt Musser from Brigham High School, Tia Haynes from Houston, Texas, Cameron Romero from Frisco, Texas, Rika Shea from College Station, Texas, Mackenzie Covington from Aledo, Texas, and Paige Canips from Houston, Texas. Congratulations to the new Lady Jacks and good luck this coming season. Before we wrap up today's show, let's have a look at the Athlete of the Week. Antonio Roos Jr., Murphy Earn, Field Athlete of the Week in the Southland Conference as well as an honorable mention of his Performance of the Week. Roos broke the program record in an 800 meter with a time of 152 and a finisher in the pole vault with the Southland best mark of 5.40 meters. Well, that's the news in sports. And now back to Cheyenne and Alex. The Humane Society of Nacogdoches is looking for your help in adoptions and donations. The animal shelter serves the county of Nacogdoches in providing animals with loving homes. These animals are in need of love, attention, and companionship and are waiting to be the future pets for you and your family. The shelter enjoys seeing the community of Nacogdoches coming out in support of adoptions by volunteering, donating, and adopting. The shelter is always in need of dog and cat food, treats, toys, leashes, and anything animal related. The Humane Society enjoys seeing the students of Stephen F. Austin State University and the community devoting their time to helping the shelter and its animals. This is done by volunteers taking the animals on walks and giving them attention away from their cages. If you are an animal lover and want to see more shelter adoptions being made, you can make a difference by volunteering, donating, and supporting. For more information on how you can help, you can visit their website at humanesocietynac.com. <coughs> that has been this episode of NAC Edition. I'm Alex Davis. And I'm Cheyenne Gibbs. And be sure to tune in next week for a brand new episode of NAC Edition. Have a great day. Spiders. What I had to do that day, deadlines, all the meetings that I Monday through Friday, working on. Uh